Hi guys. Um, today I'm going to do, I was asked by several women what I do in terms of my makeup. Got to get my pillow over here. <laughs> uh, it's more comfortable. Um, how I do my makeup. I was kind of hesitant because what works for one doesn't always work for someone else, you know, and you kind of feel like, oh gosh, why didn't it work for me? But I was asked, so I'm going to show you what I do for my makeup routine. First of all, start with, you know, a nice clean face. Be sure you have a little bit of moisturizer. Be sure you have your sunscreen on if you're going to be out and about during the day. Uh, but what I use, uh, first let me say, I'm not one of these people who believes uh, that you have to use expensive things. Uh, most women cannot afford the expensive makeup that is in the malls and the, you know, the fancy stores, that type of thing. And I have found over time that there are so many makeup cosmetics that are just as good and that don't cost a lot. You have your exceptions, you know, where some lipsticks won't have a lot of pigment so they don't color real well or um, sometimes eyeshadows. Um, but on the whole, I have found that um, most cosmetics are pretty much the same. In fact, to give you an example, uh, I was at Macy's not too long ago shopping with my son for their sales. You know, they have good sales. And one of the ladies that worked there said, said, oh, you have beautiful makeup. Your skin looks so nice. I can tell that you spend the money on your makeup. And I just kind of laughed. I, <laughs> I just said, thank you. And in my head, I'm thinking, no, I don't. I do not use expensive makeup. But it's all, you know, trial and error. And uh, in my case, I have found that you just don't need to spend a lot of money, uh, just for me. Uh, I'm not one of those people <clears throat> who are impressed, you know, when someone says, oh, I use ja, 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 and it cost me $60, and what, I'm not impressed by all that. I, I'm, I'm just not one of those people that's impressed by designer names. They mean nothing to me. All they mean to me is somebody out there is getting super rich off of somebody's money, and it's not going to be me. So, <laughs> anyway, I'll start here. I use, for my foundation... I use the 24-hour uh, uh, makeup by Revlon. I'm sure you guys have seen this. 24-hour, it really works well for my skin. It does last. In fact, I got caught in the rain one time. <laughs> it still looked great, looked fantastic. Um, and I like it because it's very highly pigmented, very highly pigmented, uh, so you need very little. And that's the other thing, ladies, especially as you get older, do not, absolutely do not put a ton of foundation on your skin trying to make it look smooth and perfect. Um, any age should not do that. But as you get older, yeah, you might have a brown spot, you might have a few freckles, what have you. Oh, well, so what? That's your skin. The, the goal is to just make your skin look a little smoother, you know, look, look kind of glowy and smooth. And I like, that's why I like this, because it's so highly pigmented that I can put just a little bit, smooth it all over my face, just enough to give my skin a smooth glow. I'm not here to cover every imperfection, you know, but to me, ladies, there's nothing worse than to see a woman who has so much makeup foundation or foundation that's so highly pigmented that their face looks like wax. It doesn't even look real. I think that's one of the worst looks ever, and I see a lot of people do that, not just older women, but young too. The idea is to just put a little foundation to give your face a smooth, glowy look, not to look like you have it caked full of foundation trying to have this perfect skin because you end up looking terrible. So that's why I like the 24 Hour by Revlon. It does stay on for me all day, um, and it, uh, it covers... Um, just the right amount. It's not too little, not too much. For me personally, it's just right to where it gives my face a smooth look. And one of the tricks I found where uh, concealer is concerned, oh God, guys, I can't believe I forgot this. Hold on just a second. Be patient. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Um, what I did in terms of concealer is, I know you all know the problem of trying to find a concealer that matches, looks well uh, with your skin and your foundation, and I got sick of it. I, got, I, I tried so many, it wasn't even funny. They either looked too light or uh, too dark, and that's the other thing. 
When you're using concealer, a lot of women want to go really light thinking, I'm going to color, cover those circles. What you end up doing is looking like a raccoon. You need to get one as close as possible to your skin tone, just a little lighter. Now what I do, this container is kind of big, you can use a smaller one, it's just one I happen to have. I get my foundation, the very one I use on my face, I pour a little bit in here and I let it, leave it open. I let it dry out. What happens, you can see it there, what happens is the water or whatever liquids they use in there evaporate and it ends up a thick consistency. And so it's even more highly pigmented. So I just need a dab. I get a little bit on my finger and just put a little under here and then very gently, very gently just even it out. And <clears throat> I hardly need any because it is so highly pigmented already when it's in the real liquid form, but then when it evaporates all the liquids, um, it's very highly pigmented. And the other thing, ladies, is as you get older, you be, you be, you've got to be very careful with when you put concealer because if you have any crepiness or wrinkles, that stuff will settle right into your wrinkles and crepiness <clears throat> and it'll look terrible. You'll see the little lines of concealer. It looks awful. So when I use this, I use very little. I'm lucky that I don't have dark, dark circles, just a little bit of darkness, not much. So I'm very lucky in that respect. But even if you do, you've got to be careful. Um, so I just put a little bit, just enough to take away the, the little bit of shadowiness that I have there. And it doesn't crease and get inside of my uh, skin because um, I use so little. And because it is so highly pigmented after it evaporating, you don't need much. And you get a very smooth look. Okay, so that's what I do for the, the foundation part. Now when it comes to uh, eyeshadow, um, the first thing I do is um, I get uh, the lighter eyeshadow, like for instance, okay, eyeshadows, yeah, you, I, I like the L'Oreal and Makeup Forever, they, they, the pigment in them is really good. And what I do is I get the lighter one, like this for instance, and I get the, I use um, uh, sponges, I do not like brushes for eyeshadow guys. I don't like the fallout from it. I just don't like brushes. I think they're messy. So I get this pack. You get a whole bunch of them. There's only a few left in here. <clears throat> I get this from Sally's Beauty Supply for like a supply for a couple of bucks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh. And um, I like them because you see there's the wider end there and then there's the thin end. Um, and what I do first is I get some and I put some of the lighter one over my entire lid to, uh, to, to, so that when I put my color eyeshadow on, it's smooth. It goes on smooth. It, if you use a primer, that's fine. I don't like to bother. I, I try to find as little, as few steps as possible. I don't like having to put too much stuff on. So what I do is I just put this over my eye and it, it, it sets a base to, to put your eyeshadow on and it comes out smooth, nice and even. Um, without it, then if you don't have something to kind of smooth out your skin, your eyeshadow can get very blotchy looking. So that's what I do. And then I use, and another thing ladies, is once you're older, okay, once you're out of your, I'd say 30s, um, even then you got to be careful, maybe mid 30. Uh, when you're young, you can do anything. You know that. They can use anything and it looks cute, it looks whatever. <clears throat> but when you get older, not so cute. Don't use black eyeshadow once you're older, okay ladies? Once you're like in your 40s and 50s, stay away from that black. It makes you look very old and haggard. Do not use black like this one here, okay? This is Black 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 by L'Oreal. <clears throat> I don't even know the name of it, but it's real black. Um, uh, don't use that on your eyes, guys. It, it makes you look very aged and old. Um, use Okay, for instance, I have this one here by Makeup Forever. It's kind of um, like a kind of rust brown. You, I don't know if you can see that there, right there. It's a rust brown color. And I love this because I'm olive skinned, so it goes really well with my skin tone. And Makeup Forever is very highly pigmented, so you have to be very careful how much you put on initially because, man, it's, it's got a lot of pigment, so it lasts forever. But I also like L'Oreal. I think L'Oreal works just as well. I have no...
problems, uh, there's really no difference to me. It's very highly pigmented, works well. Um, so I use something like that, the, the, the rust kind of brown color, and then I use just a, a brown like this. Uh, that one's by L'Oreal. <coughs> um, and then uh, to highlight, okay, the, the upper part up here, up right you know, below your brows, this is the one I use by Makeup Forever. I, I'm sorry, guys, I don't have the names, but I'm just giving you an example. There's the color. And I just use a little bit of that under the brow to kind of highlight. And most important, guys, is blend, blend, blend. There is nothing worse than seeing somebody who puts eyeshadow on and they have this demarcation right there where it ends. You blend very, very well. And that's another reason that I like these sponges because this little round end right there gives me the control to just go back and forth and blend nicely. Uh, and you don't have the mess from brushes. I hate all that fallout that brushes give you under here. You might get a little bit if you have too much shadow on here. But what I do is I put my shadow on, you know, put it on the sponge, and then I blow it to get off excess. And that really cuts down on the fallout underneath. So um, I use the... Uh, I usually use the brown and uh, the rust I like to use, the rust brown I like to use <clears throat> when I just want a little more um, color to my face because it does have kind of a rust color to it, but I love this one, this, this one by Makeup Forever. And um, I, I'm one of these people that I, I do not want to spend time with contouring, you know, the eye, having the lighter lid, and I'll do that once in a while if I'm in the mood. But I get my eyeshadow and I just cover my whole lid all the way up because I have heavier eyelids. I've got, you know how some of you have your, <clears throat> your eyelids that are up and out, you know, mine are heavier. So I put that eyeshadow up all the way, all close to the brow and blend it thoroughly. And then I put just a little bit of the light color right under the brow to highlight. Because if you don't, what happens is if you put dark eyeshadow and you don't put any on your upper lid, if you've got heavy lids, you end up looking like your, your eye is just sunk in your head and then you have this heavy lid over your eye. It doesn't look good. So you do that. Um, looks like the sun is changing. Hold on a minute here, guys. <clears throat> oh. Okay. All right. So um, that's what I do. I, I just, in, in general, I put it over my whole lid. Um, and then, uh, ladies, one of the most important things is once you're older and you start seeing crepiness or wrinkles, do not use anything, whether it be foundation, eyeshadow, or blush, with any shimmer. No shimmer whatsoever, because shimmer makes your wrinkles stand out 10 times more. Always use matte everything. You can use a little shimmer, like say you're going to go out for an evening and you want a, look, a little sparkle, put just a teensy bit right under your brow, just a little bit to give you a little highlight. But don't go putting it all over your eyes because you will look 10 years, 20 years older. Shimmer is, the, is an older woman's enemy. It's an absolute enemy. So don't do that. Use matte everything. Um, when, you, when I see some women who put on this shimmer stuff or this glowy stuff, they look terrible. Every little wrinkle and crepe shows up. It looks bad. Okay, so that's the eyeshadow. Now for the face, um, you have to be careful with powder, okay, when you get older. Now I use, this one is, uh, I think it's called Soft Cameo by Maybelline. It's shine free, because as we get older, you know, your face can get oily and shiny. Um, and the shininess shows wrinkles very badly. But you have to be careful because powder can settle in your creases so what I do I'm lucky in that I don't have crow's feet and all that stuff I don't have a lot of the problems some women do but even so I just get a little bit I mean a little bit and I put it all over my face just blend 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 I rub it rub it rub it blend 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 all over just a little bit to take to take a little bit of that shininess away because remember you have your foundation and your uh, sunscreen underneath and it sometimes can get shiny looking and never, 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 never reapply powder during the day because you end up with a cakey mess. That's all you end up with. If you get shiny, guess what? You just get some good old, if, you, if, this, is, if this is all you got is toilet paper, this works the best. I've gotten those blotters. I don't think they work that great. Tissue, toilet paper. You just blot 
your face. You hold it on there, blot it, all the oil comes off, you're fresh as a daisy again. So it's a, a good little trick. Do not put powder over and over because you end up looking like a caked up mess, especially when you're older. Um, it's, it's the worst. So, and then for blush, what I do is I, like I say, I'm not into expensive stuff. This one is NYC. I think this is like a couple bucks, two or three bucks. This one is a very neutral tone, if you can see that. Very neutral tone, kind of a pinky mauve tone, I don't know. And I, what I do first is I get my, my um, this, this powder here, and I put a little bit over where I'm going to put my blush. The reason for that is it helps keep your blush its natural color. Without anything under there, any other powder under there, your blush can get blotchy and dark. So I do that first, put a little bit of the powder, then I get this more neutral tone, put a little bit of that on my cheeks, and then I get this one. This is by Wet n Wild, okay? Another inexpensive one, <clears throat> but this is highly pigmented. And I just get a touch, I mean like that. That's literally what I do. I touch it. That's how highly pigmented it is. And you go and you, and I go over that one. So there's the, the powder, there's the, um, the neutral tone blush, and then this one. Then I blend, 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 blend. And that's the key, ladies, is you have got to blend. Take away any line demarcations. If you see them, get your finger, you know, go just blend, blend, blend. Blend it in. There's nothing worse than to see somebody with a strip of blush that just looks horrible. Very unnatural. Nobody blushes like that. When you blush, if you're out in the cold or you blush because you're embarrassed, you don't have a strip, you know. Not natural. So that's what I do for the blush. Now for my eyes, um, for my eyelashes rather, I use this wonderful little eyelash curler that I found because I've gone through so many of those as well. This is $1.99 at Walgreens, ladies. Just I, don't, I wish I knew the name. I don't have it. But it's just a, it's got a little purple strip in there. This thing is incredible. And what I do is I heat it up with a hair dryer. I know you can buy the ones that are heated. I just don't mess with that. I just heat it up with the hair dryer for a few seconds. And this little sucker just grabs your lashes and curls them. I mean, the heat is like a, a, is like a hot iron, you know, or rollers on your hair. It helps your, your, cur your eyelashes curl and stay curled. So I just heat it up a little. And to make sure you don't burn your eye when you touch yourself, touch your outer arm. If it feels hot, it's too hot to touch your face, believe me. And your outer arm will cool it off because that skin is always cooler. So you do that. And then you curl your lashes. You curl your lashes. I do at the bottom, in the middle, and a touch at the top, okay? And it holds. Then I use mascara. Okay, the mascara I use is the Turbo by Maybelline waterproof. I use waterproof because I wear contacts and I don't want any flaking and I don't like the smudginess. This one never smudges for me, never. Uh, and when you put your mascara on, please do not, okay, people have this habit, they go like this, real quick, putting on that mascara, what you end up with is blobs and little uh, balls of mascara at the tips of your eyelashes which don't look pretty and don't look natural. What you do is you get your mascara and you get it and you put it on and you slowly carry it out and up. Carry it out and up past your lash. Okay, you put it past your lash. And you do that with the mascara. Then I have this brush, which is nothing more than this after it's done. I clean it with baby oil. And I have a bunch of them. Each time I run out or this end, uh, or it's, I'm done using it, I clean one up. I just put a bunch of baby oil on it, clean it, and then I wash it thoroughly with dish soap to get all the oil out. You don't want any oil residue left on it. So then after I put my mascara on, I put one coat on, then I immediately get this and do the same thing very slowly up and out past your lashes. And what you end up with is feathery lashes that come to a point like they should, not blobs at the tip. You know that look. It's horrible. And of course, make sure your mascara is is fresh. If your mascara starts getting dried up, you're going to end up with clumpiness. you got to go get another one. But always do that. First your mascara, then you immediately quickly get this one and go right past it up out into the air, guys. Don't stop at the tip of your lashes. You end up with the clumps. That's a makes a big, big difference. Um, uh, and also, when it comes to eyeliner, guys, uh, I use, <clears throat> what I use is, um, the same thing, I use the um, 
L'Oreal, okay? When you're older, ladies, that's the other thing. Do not use black eyeliner. You, it makes you look old and haggard. It ages you a lot. What I do is I get the dark one that I showed you, the black here, and then the brown. I have separate ones just for that purpose because they last forever. And I mix the two. I get a little bit of water in the little reservoir there, the little area there. And then I get my, oh, I didn't bring, oh, yes, I did. I, I have this, um, who is this by? Let me see, guys. Oh, I can't even remember who it's by. Oh, I can't find, my dog's blankets are in the way. Anyway, here it is. It's a, it's a little uh, eyeliner brush. What I do is I get a little water in there and I mix the black with the brown, which softens it. And then you put your eyeliner on the top and just maybe extend it a tad, just a little bit. Nothing worse when you're older and you see somebody with black eyeliner with this thick marking. It looks old and makes you look haggard. So by doing, uh, the reason I like the eyeshadow is because after I put it on, I can get one of these sponges and I lightly go over it to smooth it so that it just blends into my eyeshadow, but yet you can still see it's darker by the eyelash line. Uh, there's nothing worse than seeing that gel or uh, pencil or whatever um, line on a woman's eyes that when you're older. You can do all that when you're younger, but once you get older, you gotta be careful, ladies, how you put your makeup on. So you do, I do that. I put the black brown, it's more brown. I, I put more brown so it's softer. And then I smooth it with the tip, with this tip. And it looks much more natural and it looks smoother. Um, stay away from all the black, uh, except for mascara. Stay away from black eyeshadows, black eyeliner. Once you're in your 40s, 50s and older, you gotta be careful with that. It can really be aging. You want a softer, fresher, smoother look. And even when you're younger, be careful with that black. It can really look it can look trashy or it can just look too heavy. And that's, that's just the worst. And also, when you put your foundation on, ladies, never, never, never stop right here. I have seen women who do this. It drives me freaking insane. You get your, your foundation and you smooth it down. I have smoothed it all the way down to here. I smooth it all the way down. What I do is I put a little bit and I smooth it all over to blend in with my face. And then I gently smooth it all the way down to where it just disappears into the rest of my skin. So you have a nice uniform look. There's nothing worse than seeing a woman who has a mask on. And I've seen that so many times. It drives me nuts. And I really think, I, see, I've been using foundation since I was 13. My mother, luckily, she let me experiment. I was a girly girl. I wanted to use this stuff. I've been using foundation since I was 13. All of my face, my neck. And I believe that has helped protect my skin from the sun because it does have pigment. So... Never, never just quit right here. I've seen, and I've even seen makeup artists on TV do that. It's like, it looks terrible. And I've seen makeup artists who say, oh, don't put foundation all over your face. Just dab it on the spot. You look like a freaking clown. You just put a little bit to make your face smooth, ladies. Just a little bit. Now for lipstick, okay. Um, I don't use uh, lip liners. I think they look terribly unnatural. They look terrible. I don't like them. Um, if you're going to use one, get one that is the same color as your lip. Do not get one to match your lipstick because then as your lipstick fades off, you see this line and that is the most ridiculous look on the planet. Um, so what I do is I put um, my lipstick on, okay, like this one is a, it's a real pretty neutral color from Maybelline. I don't know if you can see that. It's getting dark in here. God, it's timing. And then I put, I blot. I blot my lips like that with tissue works great and then um, I put just a dab of this is rosebud salve okay nothing worse than seeing somebody with lips that are so shiny they look like their you know, saliva is drooling or something so I put my lipstick I blot and then ladies clean off the edges you know I get my finger and I gently just go like this to get the excess off Nothing worse, again, than seeing a woman with caked on thick lipstick. It looks unnatural. It doesn't look good. The idea is to get a little color on your lips and to make it look moist. And that's why I like this Rosebud Sab. They have this or in the little tin because it just makes your lips look moist. They don't look all shiny and, and gross. Uh, and I like the look that it gives. Just moist. 
And if you want a lipstick for during the day, here's a little tri tip, uh, like, a, like a more neutral tone. Match the inside of your lip, right in here. Match a lipstick to that, and you will have a, n a natural tone that matches you. Nothing worse than seeing somebody who's got lipstick that's too light against their skin. It doesn't look good, obviously, uh, or too dark. You just, if you want a neutral tone for, say, at work or just during the day, whatever, or you're going to run to the store, you just want to put something on, match it to the inside of your lips. Guys, it's a wonderful little trick. That's what I do, and it looks completely natural. Another thing, it looks more natural. Instead of, you know, during the day, you don't want something too bright. You don't want a bright red. You don't want a dark, dark. You want something more neutral. That's the way to do it. Uh, so guys, that's about all I can think of at this point. Oh, for the eyebrows, never, never, oh God, nobody, please stop using the pencil, you know, the wax pencil. That is the worst look on the planet to see somebody with their brows all penciled in. So unnatural. I found this little eyeshadow at Walgreens, mind you, last year. It was for a dollar, and I tried it for the eyeshadow, but well, there is a case where no good for eyeshadow, not much pigment. But I wet my, my, I have this brush, if you can see that, it's just a, it's a, it's a short bristled, very firm brush. And what I do is I get a little, uh, I get a little of the black and the brown and I mix it together because you don't want your brows to look too harsh. So I get a little black, little brown, then I mix it right there in the little edge right here. And then I lightly fill in my brows with the powder. Do not use wax and all that other stuff. It looks so fake and ridiculous. When you do it this way, your brows just look totally natural. Go in and shape a little bit. You know, fill in the, the spots that need it and then shape it and, you know, spray it along the edge and make it look nice. And then you go over the edge with your finger to smooth it out. And you have beautiful, natural looking brows instead of those, those waxed in looking things that look just clownish. And that's the other thing. Ladies, when you're out of, once you're out of, I'd say your 30s, um, stop with all the bright colors and stuff. I know, and, and this is just my opinion. I'm not criticizing anybody who wants to do that. I'm just saying that when I see women who are in their 40s, 50s, and, uh, and up, with bright colors, it looks totally clownish. You want to keep it more neutral and natural looking. That's very important. So stick with your grays and your browns and, and your maybe like a rust or, you know, just something more natural looking and softer looking. Nothing worse than seeing a woman who's older with a bunch of makeup who's trying to look young and in reality it makes her look clownish and old. And that's just the facts, lady. ladies. So that's all I can think of right now. Um, that's my routine. I mean, I go through it like that now because it's been so long. <laughs> but... Um, I hope that helps those of you that asked about my makeup routine. Uh, like I say, do not ever be intimidated by anybody who's trying to make you feel that you need to use expensive products. You don't need to. Um, gosh, the sun. Oh, guys, I can't believe this. Don't get mad. But it's just like we've got clouds building here and everything's going haywire. Anyway, um, don't ever be intimidated by people, especially you younger ones, who make you feel like you need to use expensive products in order to look good. That's such a lie. Um, a lot of the cosmetics out there that are inexpensive work just as well. And I have had people, I'm telling you, I've had people tell me, oh, your makeup looks so pretty. It looks so nice. It looks so natural. And it's not 60 80 90 $100 stuff. It's just how you apply it. It's a trial and error. Yes, some things won't work as well. But once you find something that's inexpensive that works well, you don't have to break the bank you know, to get your makeup. And like I say, if you're around people who are concerned whether or not you spent a fortune, well, you're with the wrong kind of people, guys. Um, oh, and the other thing, too, I don't want to forget this. For those of you that like to contour, be so careful with that. There is nothing worse than seeing a woman, again, who contours her face so much that when you see her without makeup, you know, you go, oh, my God, who is that person, you know? I've seen that on women. There and they have you you guys you know that show The Talk. Once in a blue moon when I watch TV and that's on, there's a one of the hosts, her name is Julie Chen, I think it is. Um, oh my god, that woman's foot face looks like a paint by number. I swear to you, it looks like paint by number, you know? It is so contoured 
and they have such light makeup under her eyes that her, she looks like this raccoon and her eyeshadow is so dark and her blush so stand i mean this woman just looks like a painted mess to me i just i it looks terrible it looks so unnatural um be careful with that contouring it can really make you look fake I mean, if you want just a touch, maybe you have a wide nose and you want to put a little touch of something on the side to maybe look a little slimmer, okay, or maybe a, like if you put light, something light down the center, it can make your nose look a little more slender, even if you don't put anything on the side. And maybe you want to put just a touch of, uh, say, blush, okay, a little blush or maybe a brownish tone or whatever under here, like if you have the, you know, the jowls and the... If you have a turkey neck type thing, you can put just a little shadowing. Just a little, though, guys. Don't sit there and make your face look like like it's not your face. And especially, you know, if you meet a guy and say you become really serious, and one day he sees you without your makeup, he's like, holy shit, who is that? You know, because you've contoured your face so much that when you have your makeup off, he's like, who are, who are you? You know, I've seen that on women. It's so contoured, it looks very unnatural. Very unnatural. Be careful with that, ladies. You gotta, you gotta be careful with makeup. It can make you look great, or it can make you look absolutely ridiculous and clownish. Um, and lipstick is the other thing. When you get older, be careful. Bright colors can really make you look old, old, old. It really can. Um, make sure you have more of a softer, neutral tone. Uh, if you want a little red in there. Use one that's like a, 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 a soft, very soft red, and then you just put a little bit on your lips with your finger. That's what I do. You do if I want color, you know, I just put a teensy bit to just give that hint of color with the um, um, rosebud salve over it to make it look shiny, not shiny, but moist and pretty. And you have a touch of color. Don't go putting on a blob of bright lipstick when you're older. It just looks terrible, ladies. So anyway, that's all I can think of at this point. Um, um, regardless of your age, be careful how you put makeup on. You can look very clownish. Uh, I know there are a lot of ladies who they like to do it, and that's their thing, and that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm not here to criticize them. I'm just telling you, if you want a more natural, pretty look, more classy look, uh, stay away from a lot of the bright colors. Stay away from heavy makeup because you do end up looking very, um, just not good. Uh, that's the way I'll put it, just not that great. Um, when you're young, though, say you're in your teens or 20s, oh, yeah, you can go crazy with bright colors and glitter and shimmer and all kinds of stuff, and and you and it, looks, it looks cute. You know, it just really does. But once you're older, ladies, be careful. Uh, if you don't believe me about the shimmer thing, you know, Get a shimmer eyeshadow. Put it on if you already have crepiness and wrinkles. Put your shimmery eyeshadow on one eye. Put matte on the other, and you'll see the huge difference. The shimmery one shows all of your wrinkles. It's just terrible stuff. Uh, like I said, stay away from all the shimmer and the so-called glow stuff that has shimmer in it. Um, that can really, really show off your, your crepiness and your wrinkles. Same with shine. Shine makes all your wrinkles and puffiness and everything just stand out more because wherever that light hits the shine, it makes it puff out even more. So you got to be careful with that. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. I hope that answered your questions. Take care, and we'll see you all later. Bye-bye.